So, just got back from Star Wars Rogue One. Uh, it's very late, and I'm trying to think what to say about it. It is no Force Awakens. It's good, it's not Force Awakens good. Because it hasn't got the full nostalgia factor, you're, you're mainly seeing new characters. I say mainly, uh, I won't spoil things, but there are some expected reappearances, cameos if you will, some that I found unexpected. Uh, they, those, they were quite a surprise, I, I will say, one or two of them a surprise. Apart from that, how was it? Ah, uh, I think it was better paced than Force Awakens. I had more time to get to know the characters, to, to learn their motivations. They certainly weren't painted, the good guys especially, were not painted as all good. That was interesting. Uh, that, that I quite liked. Um, it was it was mostly good. It was mostly, I'd say, original. There was a hint of Jedi about things, but thankfully no bloody Ewoks, so not so bad. Um, I'm going to try and keep this spoilers free as best I can, so I won't go into further detail on that. Ah, real X-Wings. Yes, we had the return of real Star Wars uh, machinery. Special effects, mostly good. One or two times I thought, a bit CGI, but overall, good. Very good, in fact. Dialogue, yep, yeah, not bad. Um, acting, yeah, not bad. It, it, was, it was good, with the worst bits still being not bad. Um, similarities, differences to other movies. The comic relief, the, the, the spoiler of sorts, uh, comic relief came from uh, droids, well, a droid in particular. Uh, that seems to be a bit of a thing now. And something that's going to really annoy the Meninists is, again, the lead, really, hero or heroine. Uh, the, the lead uh, in this is, is a woman. Um, there are plenty of male characters, and get over it. There's absolutely no reason why it couldn't be a girl instead of a guy. It's absolutely fine. Makes no odds. She doesn't magically, mysteriously wield the Force Ray style, but then who cared that Ray did? It's okay. Um, so, yeah, there's there's that which may or may not be contentious for some people for some godforsaken reason. It's quite an ensemble cast of heroes, um, and they play off each other very nicely. Ah, what, what else? I'm trying to think. There, there were so many things. Um, you, you kind of, you know going into it kind of how it's going to end, or at least you know the, it, it's before, um, A New Hope starts, so you know the story well enough, and if you don't, you'll pick it up in the first five or ten minutes, and you go, aha, uh -huh, so I know that. However, you don't know how it's going to play out, you don't quite know, you, you know the, the, basics of the end but you don't know the details and you're drawn into it enough to care which is very nice uh what what was what else should i say what else can i say without spoilers that's the problem oh that's a difficult one um the craft apart from the uh x-wings and we see other vintage uh, craft there are some new ones don't know how I feel about those. I like the older stuff, but the newer stuff still kind of tied in. Um, yeah, it's it's difficult really to say anything much without spoiling it. Because unlike Force Awakens, where you could go, oh, you already know that Han's in it, you already know Chewie's in it, oh, it was like this. This is, you don't know that person's in it, and you don't know that they're in it, and I can't really say, because it will spoil it. Um, it, it does, however, uh, stay very faithful to the original trilogy. I liked the the set design, the the layouts, the the costumes. Um, we're all very A New Hope and Empire and Teddy Bear's Picnic. Um, so they they didn't really mess around and sort of George Lucas retcon the style of everything. Obviously, the cinematography is much cleaner, much better produced than the originals, but the actual design is is very authentic. That's a good thing. Uh, I suppose I should touch on one, two, three, which are numbers I refuse to remember exist. Remember? 
um, I went into this dreading prequels. Now, somebody did say it's not a prequel, it's a spin-off. And I said, well, it happens before New Hope. Surely that makes it a prequel. And I'm counting it as a prequel. But this is a prequel that works, okay? It doesn't reinvent the wheel of Jediism. It doesn't completely misplace cast and characters because George Lucas thought that would be a great idea for a bit of nostalgia or toy selling. It It's a prequel that tells a story we maybe never needed to know, but, but it tells it in a way that it's quite nice to know. Uh, <coughs> it's, it does get a little bit emotional here and there. It's, it's not a sort of thrill a minute, um, or for example, New Hope, which was all very upbeat and action and a little bit of comedy and way we're in space. Look how awesome it is. Um, it, it does have more nuance and, and variation to the mood than that. Again, I can't say too much without spoiling it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know really what else to say because it's so difficult when you're thinking, I want to tell people about this movie without telling them the details of the movie. Um, we have a, a, an overview of sorts. Um, our lead character, uh, we, we first see her first five minutes, so I'm not spoiling it too much. Um, she's on a farm of sorts with a family that are trying to keep just out of everybody's way. Sound familiar? Bit New Hopey, but it's not New Hopey enough to, to be a problem. It's kind of playing that trope, but it's not overdoing it. Um, then things progress and we have a leap in time to present day of prequel. Um, and that's where the story really starts to take off and we learn about uh, the character's motivation and uh, sort of relationships and, and all, all that kind of thing. And, and then it just, it, it really flows. Um, I'm still confused. I might have missed lines in there somewhere. I'm still not sure what a Bothan or Bothan is. I know I've been told many died to get these plans to to the, the Rebel Alliance headquarters. I still don't really know what they are. I was kind of hoping that I'd go, oh, wow, Bolthans! No idea. Couldn't tell you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really... Honestly, I cannot think what else to say now. Um, I know this has been fairly short, but still rambly and completely lacking in detail. It's because... I, if I tell you, oh, there's that person and that person and that happens, and I, then there's no point in the film. And I don't want to do that. I think it's a good film. It's an enjoyable film. You don't need to know Star Wars to enjoy it. But obviously, if you do know Star Wars, when you see the various unexpected appearances, you'll have a, oh, wow, moment, which is cool. Um... From a non-Star Wars fan point of view, oh, it's an okay action film. It's not great. I, the, the visuals aren't as good as Force Awakens. Um, the, the story is, is good, but you've, you've seen the sort of thing before. The, the MacGuffin drives the characters in a direction that, that you've seen before, but then it's very difficult to do anything original. Look at me doing advent calendars every damn day still. It's, I would say, go and watch it, even if you're not a Star Wars fan. If you just like a bit of sci-fi, stuff gets blown up film, you'll like it, I imagine. Um, if you are a Star Wars fan, I think you'll probably either love it or loathe it. Because I really like Force Awakens, and apparently a lot of people didn't. Um, I, I do like this. I like it because I found it entertaining, and because of the, oh, wow, sort of factor of the the small nostalgia moments that are just enough and peppered throughout to to keep you going oh oh that's cool um yeah so i really can't say any more than that um and you probably stopped listening ages ago probably about 20 seconds in so i'm going to shut the hell up and go to bed because it's damned late and i've got bloody advent calendars to do in the morning <laughs> okay uh, i will see you anon bye